We've already seen standing waves as they exist on strings that are closed on both ends. Let's have a look at how they exist inside pipes. There's two situations that we have to worry about. Pipes that are open on one end as we see in this picture, in fact this pipe is open on both ends, and pipes that are closed on either one end or both ends. All we have to remember is that if it's open on an end, it has to be ending at an antinode, and if it's closed, it'll be ending at a node. All of these pipes are open on both ends, so either side will have to end on an antinode for a standing wave to exist. Now let's start by looking at our fundamental mode. What we're going to do is calculate what the wavelength is in relation to the length of the pipe. So our fundamental mode exists where there's an antinode on either end, and the longest possible wave, remember that's what the fundamental is, is where one end starts with a crest and the other end ends with a trough. And I'll trace that wave out as if we froze it in time. So you can see in blue here I've traced the wave out. It starts at a crest, or an, uh, at one of the antinodes it starts at a crest and ends at a trough. And we know that the distance between a crest and a trough is actually half a wavelength. So for our first or fundamental wave, the wavelength will simply be twice L. Now the second one shows our first overtone. Again, we start with an antinode and we have to end with an antinode. And all, you, all we've done is added an additional node in the middle. We see that if we follow one wave completely through, it starts at a crest, goes down to a trough in the middle, and ends at a crest. So we actually have one full wave contained in that length. Now the third one's a little bit trickier yet. Let's follow it through. Starts at a crest, ends at a trough, here's another crest, and then another trough. So within this pipe there's one and a half waves, or there's three over two full waves in that length. So let's start by writing that equation below the pipe, and then we'll solve it for lambda. So we see from our equation that one length contains one and a half waves. So if I solve that for lambda, my third wavelength will be two-thirds of the length. Now let's focus on the frequency. And we know the equation for frequency is just based on our universal wave equation. Frequency is simply the speed of the wave over lambda. And it's important to note that V is constant. And that's because the medium, which is the air, the speed of sound in the air does not change from pipe to pipe. So V remains constant for all of these waves. Let's see how our frequencies look from wave one all the way down to wave three and see if we can get a pattern. So working it through, our fundamental frequency will be V over wavelength one, which will be V over two L. So F1 is simply V over two L. Similarly, I can look at F2. F2 will be V over lambda 2, which is L. And F3 will be V over 2 thirds L. Now what we want to do is write these all to look like the fundamental. How are these multiples of F1? Let's start with F2. If we take F1 and multiply it by 2, you can see that the 2's will cancel and we'll end up with our F2 frequency. So we can write F2 is simply twice the fundamental. If I look at F3 and simplify it a little bit because we don't like fractions in the denominator, we get F3 is 3V over 2L, and remember that V over 2L is actually F1. So our F3 will simply be 3F1. So you can see a pattern. F2 is 2F1, F3 is 3F1, F4 will be 4F1, etc. All we're doing is adding on the fundamental frequency every time. So for a pipe open on both ends, the allowable frequencies are the fundamental, twice the fundamental, 
three times the fundamental, etc. Exactly the same results as if we had a, a string closed on both ends.